I've got the voice of the Santa Cruz Warriors, Kevin Dana, joining me. And what I'm particularly interested about or interested in hearing from Kevin is his opinion on Jermichael Green. Because he's technically an employee of the Warriors, you could not comment on Jermichael and that signing <laughs> until it was official. Folks, it's official. He's now a, a member of the Golden State Warriors officially. We're going to break his edition down. Uh, I got a soundbite from this NBA player named Mike James uh, where he's talking about Stephen Curry. We got to get into that. Uh, and just the overall NBA landscape, uh, some news to drop. It's going to be a fun show. It's going to be an August show, the deadest time of year in the NBA, but we're going to make it fun. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. You can follow Kevin Dana, the voice of the Santa Cruz Warriors and sometimes Golden State Warriors, among many broadcasting duties at Kevo408. That's K E V O 408. You can follow me, Cyrus Otzes, on Twitter at Dog Surf Rocho. How you doing, brother? Been a little while. You've been doing some traveling. And most importantly, again, you couldn't talk about the Jermichael Green news just because it wasn't official until about two days ago. Now that he is an official member of the Golden State Warriors, the floor is yours. Tell me, tell the world your thoughts on Jermichael Green because I know you were excited and couldn't wait to talk about him. Yeah, so I first saw Jermichael Green. I mean, I remember his name at Alabama, but I first saw him his professional rookie year with the Austin Toros at the time. In 12-13 season, solid power forward in the G League. Like, didn't think at all, like, oh, he was close to a call-up or anything. Then he went to France, I believe it was the country he played in 13-14. And then he came back to the Austin Toros, and they were the Spurs at this time. His first year was the Austin Spurs. That team also had Jonathan Simmons, by the way, went on to have, like, a four-year NBA career, played for the Santa Cruz Warriors. I love uh, Got, like, a $30 million contract, I want to say, from the Orlando Magic. Uh, so like this, this, uh, I'm reading one of the box, their starting five for this one game against us also featured, uh, Bryce Cotton, who played for a full season in the NBA. Kyle Anderson was on assignment his rookie oh. year with the San Antonio Spurs and Jamichael Green is like the fourth game of the season. I hadn't seen him in two years and he murdered Santa Cruz, 27 points, 14 rebounds out of the box score up. Uh, two assists, two steals, a block on 13 to 22 shooting, just absolutely just dominated uh, and led Austin to a win. Then we played him like three weeks later. They they were had been on a heater. He had 24, 13, two blocks, three assists, nine of 15 shooting, hit all six of his free throws. Like this guy was a monster and had like over the course of two. I don't know what happened in France, but he just became just a stud in the G league. And like a, a month later, I think he got called up by, I want to say it, it, I think it was first San Antonio and then Memphis. And then like just stuck in, has stuck in the NBA ever since. And so I was, uh, I was a big fan of Jamichael green from what I saw him like do to Santa Cruz twice. Just, I mean, this, this Santa Cruz Warriors team won the title the year that I'm talking about. Jamichael green yeah. just like dominated them. Um, so I, I've, I've like, he's one of the guys who's like box scores. I, I, I traditionally check cause I always check up on my former G, G league, just stuff. My former G leaguers. I, I, I have no <laughs> like yours. actual, it's all yours. <laughs> yeah. I have no actual possession or ownership of any of these guys, obviously, <laughs> but, um, they, they feel like my kids who I'm too young to have biologically. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, no, Jamichael Green was just just became this force in the G League, and I've really enjoyed watching his career blossom. And it's a guy that I think will fit in very nice with Golden State, and a, a guy that like I wish I had thought of before as like a potential 
San a Golden State Warrior. I guess you know, kind of you, you see the trade to Oklahoma City, and yeah, you know, he could have gotten bought out, which is obviously what happened, but like you, you didn't necessarily think of him as being out there on the market, or at least I didn't. And, and so when I heard the news to Michael Green, I was like, oh, hell yeah, nice. Like kind of caught me off guard, but was very excited about it. Um, so yeah, I'm a, we can talk about Jamichael Green as much as you want. And I, I, that, I know that's kind of one of the annoying things, uh, I, I, you know, to give the company line, like can neither confirm nor deny until, uh, you know, something is like officially official and a press release and all that. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so happy it's to talk good, about it now. Um, yeah, I know it's been what well, probably like a week or so and or maybe even longer, two weeks. Since, uh, I mean, look, it, it, I don't think I think anyone who follows this game or the Warriors or watches this show fully understands the position you're in. I mean, like it's there are rules that the NBA clearly has. I mean, we're now right now, like in the news, for example, the New York Knicks, Knicks are being investigated for tampering. Uh, I think the Philadelphia 76ers are being investigated for tampering. So the last thing I want is for you and your name to be in the news for all the wrong reasons since you are a part of the Warriors uh, organization. No worries, brother. It's fine. I'm just glad we could talk about it now. And you're right. I Look, no one predicted this. Like no, And I think the, the biggest reason is it, it, there really was no way of knowing outside of either Jermichael or the Thunder or his agent releasing the information that he was going to be bought out because that was not necessarily widespread information. Uh, you know, there was a, there was a possibility of it clearly. I mean, the Thunder, you know, th there had been some, I guess, some uh, news leaked out that they were considering doing so that was going to be possibly the plan. But the point is, that there's no way. I mean, how could you know that? Um, and then when you heard uh, Jamichael had a press conference two days ago, I want to play some sound from that in just a second. Um, I was dying to know who the other team was. I mean, all indications are he was going to go somewhere else. And then I guess Steve Kerr calls him. Draymond Green calls them. They're 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 you know giving him their best recruiting pitches, and apparently it didn't take that long after that. Um, were, like, were you surprised by by any of it? Like, were you surprised that he was available? Were you surprised that the Warriors got him? Or or when this happened, was it just nothing but elation over the fact that they added a huge uh, bench piece? Yeah, I mean, well, I was prim primarily elated because he had been a longtime G leaguer. Uh, so like when I get excited about like signings like it's like i watched this guy play in the g league for two like my motivations are, are are different from the normal like um i guess basketball fan or even like like hardcore basketball fan who follows guys like maybe even deeper than i do if i just see a former g leaguer and like golden state signs him i'm gonna lose my mind that's just kind of the way it is um unless it's like a couple of players who I really don't think are that good, but Golden State hasn't signed any of those guys. And uh, I'm not going to slur their <laughs> names uh, now because they're, they're not in the NBA, but, but um, <laughs> yeah. So like, I, I guess like, I, I'd be curious to know who that other team was too. I, I don't know who that other team was, um, but what was the first part of your? I, I lost myself in my thoughts. Well, I was just wondering if you if you uh, were just surprised that he was even available because I, I guess that's why his name was ever discussed is he was not an available free agent and yeah. there was no official news that he was going to be bought out. So, like, did that part surprise you at all, or were you expecting okay. that? So, like, in hindsight, it shouldn't have surprised me because, like, yes, a thirty-two year old on the Oklahoma City Thunder yes. doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense for like what they're trying to do. Now, I always see the value in having veterans, and I am of the belief that I would rather have someone in their late twenties and early thirties than someone in their early twenties, just because, like, for the most part, unless you are looking for foundational pieces. Like most of the guys you're going to have are going to be on your team for like three to five years at the very longest. And those, those are like guys you're in love with. Um, and so like I'd rather have a guy who's closer to his prime or is in his prime than someone who has like a lot of developing to do and might have a lot more upside. I'd rather have the what do you what can you do for me now? Yeah. But um, but obviously Oklahoma City isn't playing that game right now. They're playing the long game. And so like a 32 year old doesn't really kind of fit in with Eaton, regardless of how good Jamichael Green may be this season. They want to look at these young, uh, these young cats, you know? So, um, 
So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me now. I wasn't exactly thinking of that in the moment just because thinking out, okay, well, uh, who's still available on the market? And when you see, like, free agents, Jermichael Green wasn't a free agent. Like, he was actually on the Thunder. And so, like, that's – Easy I to think. miss. Yeah, and, and I'm yeah. totally with you, man. The moment it happened – I was like, damn, like I just, I just, it was such an obvious thing. Right. But it was just one of those at the same time that when you're doing your research, his name's not going to be there because the buyout market is entirely predictive. Like for example, Patrick Beverly probably going to get bought out at some point, but you never know. They might just end up keeping them. And so as a result, you can do all the research in the world you want, but people are not writing speculative lists on uh, who's probably going to get bought out. At least those aren't common articles to find. And so it made the research difficult, by the way, uh, with every show I do, I try to look into the camera like a professional broadcaster, right? Um, and when we were talking when we, before this, we started recording, I'm just setting things up. I normally like look at you. I had no idea until just a moment ago you got a haircut. Nice look, bro. Like, oh, you got the thank you. Yes. My, my, my man that do cuts on Instagram. He, he's like my friend from elementary school. He he has cut up to a tag of before the national championship game that was played at Levi's Stadium. So, Used to cut up the Oakland Raiders when they were the Oakland Raiders. They actually flew them out to Las Vegas for a little bit. So shout out Do Cuts on Instagram, D-U underscore C-U-T-S. For anyone who's looking for a haircut, he cuts out of Santa Clara, this uh, this nail salon there. Oh, you're funny. Or you could just do what I do, which is cut my own hair. Yeah, so that's what I did for two years (laughs) from like March 2020 to like Saturday. And then Saturday I was like, you know what? Screw it. I want like a, a real haircut. So, <laughs> yeah. It looks good, man. It looks very good. Hey, thank you. And thank you. When we come back, um, we're going to play some sound from Jermichael Green. Uh, I want to know your thoughts on on now that he's officially a member, I could ask you, what are you going to expect from him? I mean, what like, like where is he going to be in the rotation? How many minutes you think he's going to play? This is all speculative based on your opinion. But again, your observation skills are phenomenal. I trust a lot of what you say. And so when we come back, we're going to do that. Um, I'm going to apparently I tweeted something that was an entirely a joke. And it's kind of both making me laugh and kind of freaking me out a little bit that people can believe what I, I wrote to be fact. Um, I'll, I'll tell tell you all about it in just a second. First, got to talk about betonline.net. They're your fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. It's all there. Uh, and, and by the way, the, the Warriors right now are still second behind uh, the Boston Celtics in terms of being the favorites to add Kevin Durant. Uh, I want to add this qu- quick side note real quick in the middle of this read. Um Kevin Durant, breaking news, uh, is going to meet with the owner of the Brooklyn Nets. Um, th- b- there's no additional information, in, you know, in terms of what they're going to talk about, if there's any progress, because trade talks have stalled. And one important thing I read in the report is that um, other teams are backing away from the Nets because apparently every time there's a negotiation, it gets leaked to the public, and you're seeing teams start to freak out a little bit. A, a case case of point: the Boston Celtics. They now have um, a player, a star player in Jalen Brown, who's pissed at him because the news is out there that the Celtics supposedly were sh- are shopping him and proposing trades with him. Um, so teams are now backing off the Nets. Their trade demands were outrageous to begin with. Um, any thoughts on Kevin Durant, Kevin? Like, do you think he's going to get traded or do you think he's going to stay in Brooklyn? I mean, I thought when he asked for the trade in July that I thought it was going to be imminent. Now I kind of lean towards he's starting the season with the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, he still's got four years left on that contract. And, and Kevin Durant doesn't strike me as a guy who's going to sit out. Just <laughs> no. for the sake of the, and he's definitely not going to sit out four years. Uh, so I think he plays to start the season. Uh, that would be my guess. Since yeah. I mean, when did that trade demand come in? Like at the start of free agency, which was what June thirtieth. Yeah, it's been more it, than it was a month. like right around the beginning of July. So yeah, it's been a month now. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm almost positive what happened is this: is that he signs this, this contract extension. He expects Kyrie to have um, equal respectable treatment, and the team tells Kyrie like we're not interested in you anymore. And and 
Kevin's like, F this. Like, everything you promised me is now out the door. Um, you bring this Ben Simmons guy. I don't know what the hell we're going to get with him. And I, this, this stinks. But you're right. He's, dude, he, he's locked into a four-year deal. He has no leverage. Yeah. It's crazy. Because the Nets are not going to just let him out of his deal. They're not going to, you know, and they're not going to trade him for anything less than they want. Their <laughs> expectations are outrageous. But um, the point to all that is you can bet on it. Just go to Bet Online. Uh, the, the, the top online resource for your sports wagering information. You can bet on where you think Kevin Durant is going to go next. Just, just one of the many things you can bet on. Uh, bet online. It's where the game starts. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. For your second listen, get up to date on the latest news and rumors in the NBA in just 30 minutes every day with Locked On NBA. Locked On NBA, your daily NBA update in just 30 minutes. You can follow Kevin Dana on Twitter at Kevo408. Still waiting on that blue check mark and another 20,000 followers. You do deserve both of those. I'm a little surprised that you don't have that yet. It's just, I think it's a matter of uh, when, not if. Um, so here's a sound from Jermichael Green, the new member of the Golden State Warriors. He's going to be uh, undoubtedly their backup. Uh, stretch four is the is a position I keep hearing. Although, like he even said, I don't know if it's in this clip specifically, but he did say that he is comfortable playing uh, power four. I'm sorry, uh, backup center. Um, and anyways, here is Jermichael Green at his presser. Who who did you talk to as you guys went through the process of signing and? I guess, how did you ultimately come to the decision that you wanted to play here? Um, honestly, I ain't, I didn't see myself being here at first. Uh, I was getting ready to go somewhere else, and I was in Jamaica. And I ended up getting a call from Steve Kerr. So um, <clears throat> after talking to him, man, I just couldn't tell him no. You know, uh, with the organization and what they built over here, you know, uh, just, just felt that I, I love to be a part of it. Can you shed a or hi Kendra Andrews How ESPN? Doing? Can you shed a little bit more light just on that situation and, and the the change of heart? What Steve may have said that you say, yeah, I have to come play for you. Man, um, uh, just told me, uh, no, they were interested that they wanted me here. They wanted me to be a part of the program, and you know, I got on the phone with Jerry Mine, and we talked for a good minute, and and you know, we've been knowing each other since eighth grade. So, uh, no, it, it wasn't a hard decision. Um, I feel like you come here handle business, you know, uh, you can set yourself up for life. So just, uh, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. He saw those paydays, Gary Payton, the second God, he saw Otto Porter Jr. See his career rejuvenated. Great things happen when you play for the dynasty that has the golden state warriors. Um, I didn't know him and Draymond knew each other and they played back when, did you know yeah. that? Were you familiar with that? I didn't know that. I mean, they're the same age, so it makes sense. I mean, well, I yeah. guess, yeah, but I, I didn't know that at all. Yeah. So what do you expect, man? I mean, I, I see him playing. There were other attributions of that press conference. He he alluded to, you know, being ready to, to play like, you know, that that to bring that tough dog mentality in the inside. He talked about playing a uh, small ball center if need be. Um, you know, I could see him playing a wide variety of roles. I, I think in a lot of ways he might even be a step up from Otto Porter Jr. Maybe that's a bold statement to say, but I see him being a more stronger inside presence a uh, slightly stronger rebounder. Um, his three-point shooting is very comparable. If you take away last year, he also mentioned that he had a wrist injury, uh, which contributed to his shooting numbers going down last year. Um, yeah, man, what what role do you see uh, Jermichael Green playing this upcoming season for the Warriors? So I think Jermichael Green is going to be huge for the games in which, like, Draymond or Looney or Wiseman don't play. I mean, maybe, you know, Looney plays 82 uh, again. He showed he could do that. But, like, it, it, I think it's reasonable to expect that even if Draymond is healthy all year and, and Wiseman's healthy all year and Looney's healthy all year, like, n those guys aren't going to play all 82 games. Like the, like, the chances of all three of those playing all 82, and especially with, like, Draymond having been on rest days last year before the back injury. Like, I think that's where he's going to really come in and show his value to this team, because I, I was just kind of doing the math in my head. If you, if you saw me looking off camera, when you were talking about Jermichael Green, I was just kind of 
pouring, putting down numbers. And the number is 240, right? You have 240 minutes to fill on the court, 48 times five. And so if everyone's healthy, like you think kind of through your top five and Jordan Poole, that's like 175 minutes there. Steph, Clay, Dre, Wiggins, Looney, and, and Poole. Then like you have another 65 minutes and you still have DiVincenzo, Moody, Kaminga, Wiseman. Like, all right, those if everyone's healthy, those guys are going to get the bulk of those minutes. There wouldn't be a whole lot of minutes left over for Jamichael Green in like a full squad kind of like day. Jamichael might not play a ton. He could get you 10 to 12 minutes maybe, I think, and get days like that. I think he is a rotation player with all 11 for sure. But I think where his value is really going to show – is when the Warriors are down a couple of guys for injuries mm-hmm. and rest days. I think that's when he could like really I think he's gonna really contribute to being like an 82 game play. They talk about 82 game players and 16 win players, the 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 quote that Draymond had. And maybe, you know, maybe 82 game player was like not as valuable as a 16 win player. But I think like Jamichael will have a lot of value in the 82 game regular season eating up minutes and you know being able to play a multitude of roles because he is so versatile like on Mm -hmm. you know defensively you know he could guard three through five or whatever and he could step out and shoot it um i think that does kind of give golden state like a lot of value to get you through the grind of an 82 game regular season i think he could certainly have a playoff role as well um but yeah i think it makes Golden State their one through eleven really, really solid. I, I agree, dude. I wholeheartedly agree. Again, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this edition, and um, I could. You're absolutely right because because realistically, <clears throat> I don't envision the Warriors playing Steph, Dre, Clay, maybe even Wiggins um, ba- on back to backs consistently. Maybe yeah. not at all this year. And so you're going to stagger those things, right? Especially in a road trip where you might have Steph play one game, Clay play another game. You might have Dre play one game, Wiggins play another game. And then you could also see that kind of uh, uh, splitting up of the minutes and, and and time and, you know, your rotation position with Looney, Wiseman, and, and Jermichael Green. So, and I just love the fact he still spaces the floor. You know, when he's not out there, he's not clogging things up. It, people are not going to leave him alone out there beyond the arc. Um, his defense is sound. I mean, he's a strong dude. I, I remember I, my memories of him are mostly from his days playing um, for the Memphis Grizzlies. I, yeah. And the Warriors would have some battles because uh, he was playing small forward alongside Zach Randolph and Marcus Gasol. And um, yeah, man, I it's just I'm just stoked he's on the team. Is any final thoughts before we move on from Jamal Green? Yeah, I mean, like that one one year with Memphis, he was like ten and a half and eight and a half, just about like points and rebounds yes. per game. And also, he, I mean, he's been, like, pretty available for his career. Like, I mean, he hasn't played 82 in any year, but 78, 77, that 17, 18 year, he did play, like, two-thirds of the season. But then outside of that, he's played, you know, more than three-quarters of available regular season games. And he played in – even even with a wrist injury last year, he played in 67 of 82 for Denver. So, like, he's a pretty available guy, which – I, I think, you know, again, to your point, Cyrus, if you're going to try to, you know, I mean, maybe nurse isn't the right word, but like, you know, kind of manage the regular season with with your core guys who are in their early to now mid 30s with, with Stephen Curry, you know, at, at 34. Uh, I I think, you know, in some aspect, his to borrow a monster sports cliche, his best ability could be availability. <laughs> well, but durability, you're right. I, I really yeah. think uh, that monster trade that the Minnesota Timberwolves did to acquire Rudy Gobert, which was a, an abysmal trade, one of the worst trades I've ever seen in, in the history of the game, in my humble opinion. But I feel like the one thing Rudy Gobert gives you, which a lot of bigs don't, is durability. And, and going, going, playing off the yeah. availability word, it, 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 that's not a very common thing. So when you find a big who's who's consistently playing for you, that's a huge plus. Um, so you're right. And here's another thing I see about Jamal Green. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Is he's also a bit of an insurance policy in the postseason if Wiseman or Kaminga don't seem that ready to handle the load yet. You know, for in terms of playing 
important minutes for the Warriors to repeat as world champions. If they're not ready, because again, uh, Kaminga is going to be uh, 20 years old when the postseason rolls around next year. Uh, Wiseman will just have turned 22. You know, these are kids still. So, and you know, you're going to be counting on them for really important minutes as you're pushing for a repeat world championship. Um, yeah. And I think Jermichael, in case either of those guys aren't quite ready, can step in and help in that regard. Is that something you see as well, or do you think I'm totally? Crazy? No, I, I think that's a, I think that's a solid point for sure. Because I mean. You know, Kaminga might have gone through a postseason grind, but next year he's still going to be 20 in the playoffs, right? So he's still going to be incredibly young, and this will be Wiseman's yes. first postseason, assuming, A, the Warriors make the playoffs, and B, Wiseman is healthy, uh, which, you know, I'm willing to make both of those assumptions. Like, Jamichael Green, like, he has proven he's been good against the Warriors in the playoffs, right? Like, uh, yep. he didn't have a great – postseason against them this last year but you know you go back to that series against the Clippers when he shot 52 percent from three against them and the average 11 points and five rebounds in 24 minutes a game uh you know as, as kind of a part-time starter in that series like he's proven and, and you know in the press conference and in you know the press clippings they've talked about that series that he had against Golden State when he was with uh, that eight seeded Clippers team that you got a couple more games than I think people expected them to get. Yeah. The, the Warriors blew a 31 point lead in game two of that. I was actually doing stats for Clippers radio. And uh, I will say it was really interesting to listen to on Clippers radio, listening to that comeback there uh, at Oracle, but um, the great Brian Seaman, now their TV voice. Um, oh. But, but um, yeah, no, I, I, I do think he does kind of, He's another guy to go to who has been through. I mean, what he is every year he has been in the NBA, he has made the playoffs. I, 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 I oh no, besides the 17 18 season, which okay. I, I don't know if like the if he was either hurt or the Grizzlies didn't make it this year. I, my memory doesn't go back that far. Um, but so seven of the eight years he's been in the NBA, he has been in the playoffs, and he has 49 playoff games. He's made five starts, 17 minutes a game. So, like, he has significant playoff experience. Yeah, welcome to the Golden State Warriors, the defending world champion, Golden State Warriors, Jermichael Green. And speaking of the uh, uh, the assumption you made right there, which is a perfect segue, a great transition to what I'm going to show you here. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to be able to see it. I'll, I'll read it out loud for those listening on the podcast. I tweeted something yesterday. This was immediately following the press conference of Jermichael Green, or two days ago, whatever it was. Um, totally joking, man. This was about me being as, as glib, as farcical as possible. I wrote, sources, when Jermichael Green oh, I saw arrived... saw this <laughs> yes. yes. Sources, when Jermichael Green arrived for his introductory press conference, the Warriors measured his ring size to plan ahead for the team repeating as world champions. Like, I, th I thought that was an obvious joke, man. I mean, I, I really thought that people would see that immediately as the, for just the ridiculousness that it is. People are, are are taking this running with it as a fact. Folks, teams don't do this, all right? I can understand the Warriors maybe being a little cocky. There might be some arrogance with the defending world champions. No one is measuring ring sizes for next year's world championship. Please don't believe those things. Um, I'm, I'm, my lesson is I'm never writing anything with the word sources in it again as a joke, regardless of how ludicrous the content actually is. <laughs> you didn't believe that, did you? Please tell me you didn't buy that. I saw the tweet. I was like, hmm, that's an interesting tidbit. <laughs> then I'm like, I, I, he might be joking. I don't know, but like, I should, I should have known that. Like, uh, my my <laughs> is brain is not exactly in <laughs> work mode right now. Is it that so, believable that a team would do that, to you, Kevin? I mean, no, I mean, like, they like, if I had seriously like poured over the tweet, I would have been like, wait, no. When I got <laughs> measured for a ring which I did for the 2015 G League champion Santa Cruz Warriors. Hey now. It came after the season. Yes! Uh, and, and we had, like, a really good team on paper coming back the next year, and I told everyone we were going to go 40 and 10. Uh, like, I did not get fitted for a ring preseason. By the way, that team went 19 and 31. So, uh, Oh, ouch. Yeah, I, it was, like, one of the worst predictions I've ever made. Besides, <laughs> we still beating Germany in, in the 2014 World Cup semifinals. Um, but, but anyway. 
I am sorry that for the people that bought into that, uh, I did not mean to mislead. I thought that was a, a harmless joke. It, it probably hopefully still is harmless, but um, no, the Warriors would not do that, folks. I, that was just me being a cocky ass, apparently. Um, but uh, I did get a laugh out of it. I hope other people did, too. I want to play one more soundbite, uh, <laughs> Kevin. Um, yes. This is a player who – did he play for the Nets last year? I'm talking about an individual named Mike James. Uh, oh, did, I, I – Let's play the soundbite, and then I'll give you my my Mike James like uh, love it. What I know about right. him. So Mike James either played for the Nets last year or the year before. Uh, relative journeyman. I think he's only played in the NBA a total of two years. Um, he was on this podcast. I don't know what it is. It's called player. It's called Player's Choice. I mean, this clip came from like TikTok. I don't know, dude. I'm this is my clear evidence that I'm getting old, man. I might someday try out tiktok just because everyone uses it but i also feel like the best parts of it are just screen captured and republished on other platforms so i don't think i'm missing much but uh this was mike jan on a show called player's choice and the discussion uh, turned to stephen curry and where mike james thinks stephen curry should rank among all the individual players in the nba currently so here's what mike james had to say what what you got to say you got a problem with my five man i, I don't have any problem with your five but i can see why kd would have a problem with your five we i think we had a problem on positions because i think that was his five too i don't really remember though so i don't want to misquote him. it just blows my mind steph isn't top five for anybody is it because of age or just like i do my top five off of like obviously you got to perform and kill and all that that's Number one. But then, like, I got to look at your game and just how you do it. And Steph, like, how he plays and how he gets stuff off, just it's just kind of one-dimensional at times, if that makes sense. Like from what Steve Kerr draws up? Yeah, basically. Like, he's just not – he's not the primary ball handler a lot. Right. And for a point guard, that kind of bothers me. But he does score off the dribbles. So, I mean, he's a superstar. So, this is like – I mean, when you're picking your top five, you're kind of just picking it. You're drawing the straws at this point. Like, you just kind of nitpicking. I think those other five can do whatever they want to do on any team in the world right now. If we put Luka, Embiid, Bron, KD, and Giannis on any team in the world, they're going to be who they are right there as soon as you put them in there. He's still going to kill. He's still going to be Steph, but I just don't – I think he maximizes him system. at that at that team, which is yeah. nothing wrong with that. I mean, you can maximize yourself at a team and – that could be your role. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But So you, you know feel like I mean? he benefits a lot from his teammates and that system. Yeah, I feel like the, everybody benefits. Like, they benefit from him. He benefits from everybody else. I think mm -hmm. that that system is just kind of beneficial. But I feel like... There's nothing him, wrong with that. Yeah, There's nothing wrong with like that. It just is what it you, is. If you put him in, in Minnesota, he would still kill, but he just wouldn't... I just don't know if it would be the same... You know, right. without Draymond being Draymond, without Clay being Clay, I just don't think it, I don't know if it would be the same mixture. Would you like to see that for him? Like, kind of branch it off be, and like really stamp his le like I guess you can call it like legacy, like really like show that he is that guy, even without all of the supporting cast and the system and the coaching and everything like that. To be honest, no, I'm fine with him being there. I like him being there. That's cool for me. I think he enjoys it. He looks good there. He kills. I wouldn't leave. Why? As funny as it sounds, he probably is a top 10 player all time or close to it, but I just don't think he's top five in the league. I, I, I want to, I, I, what? <laughs> so, A, I think Steph Curry is a top five player in the NBA right now. Uh, he Easily. was just named finals MVP. Easily. Um, and yes. he, so, so I, I think that constitutes being top five in the NBA. Um, like, and it wasn't a series against a team that like didn't have potential, like, you know, all stars or whatever. He was going up against, you know, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and the Warriors had a lot of good players. So, uh, this isn't just like, well, there wasn't who else are you going to give it to? Like kind of like finals MVP kind of thing. Um, so a, he is top five B I guess, uh, Mike James's top 10 is very like uh, would be more slanted towards active players. If he's not in his top five, but he's a top 10 player all time. Like, I guess his top five would be those five guys. He mentioned his top 10 all time, Steph Curry. And then like, Le uh, you know, Michael Jordan, 
and Magic Johnson and well, let, well, let me, let me, yeah, it, 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 Joe, oh, yeah, Joel Embiid is not top ten yet. I look. Yeah. Let, let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Just just a just because I'm trying to follow follow the logic of this. You're right. How could Steph be? Steph is still in the prime of his career. So how could he be a top ten all, top ten all time player, but not currently top five? That just makes absolutely no sense. But let's take a step back. Is Stephen Curry one dimensional to you? Because that was his prime. One of his main critiques for why Steph is not a top five player. In your opinion, well, is he one dimensional? Well, no, he kind of caught. I mean, and I, I do have a big like Mike James thing that I want to get into after we kind of parse his argument. He did kind of contradict himself. He said he plays off the ball a lot, but then he said he scores off the dribble, which makes him yes. a superstar. So he does both. So, like by his own logic, he is not one dimensional. He can score off. He can score off the dribble. He could score without the ball. Uh, he's one of the best movers without the ball. He's also one of the best ball handlers in the NBA. Uh, he gets to the rim at will, and he makes a lot of threes. So, uh, and he's also very good, you know, mid-range pull-up jump shooter, which he doesn't use as much, but we've seen him be very lethal with it. Uh, so that sounds to me like a three-level score, and he he's coming off his best defensive year. So, I just talked about four different dimensions there, I believe. Well, let me let me let me uh, ask let me maybe ask a question that could provide more clarity for why Mike James, in my opinion, is inc- is so off here. Um, and and I, I read somewhere else too, by the way, because the clip I played was edited. Supposedly, yeah. in the unedited version, Mike James referenced that his top maybe it was in here, but I don't know. But he said that his top five is the same as Kevin Durant's top five, and that they had yeah. spoken about it, which indicates a that Kevin Durant puts himself in the top five. No, no narcissism there at all, or or, or, or over. I would put Kevin Durant in the top five too. <laughs> but I do think but what he said, but what's player. interesting is if that's Kevin Durant's top five, that also means Kevin Durant doesn't think Stephen Curry belongs in the top five, which is a whole other discussion. But let me ask you this: Is Stephen Curry does he have any weaknesses to his game? I mean, not that I can think of. He rebounds the hell out of a ball for a guard. He obviously yes. assists it very well. He's gotten a lot yes. better. Uh, on defense as his career has uh, grown, and he's the best shooter in the history of the NBA. So uh, uh, there's none that come to my mind. So if, if – exactly. I, I obviously share the exact same sentiments, and maybe we're a little biased here, but I don't think – I don't think we are. I think you can you can like someone while simultaneously being objective. So if he, ha- he has no weaknesses, and, and, and to hear to hear him criticize that – I think his argument ultimately was that if you just – had a, a team of scrubs, right? If you have, like, let's say there's four four players on a team and they're average at best, probably awful, and then the fifth player was either Steph or Durant or LeBron, Giannis, Luka, uh, Joel Embiid. These are the five that Mike James listed that were not Steph. Uh, his argument, I believe, is that those other five players will carry their team further than Steph and Curry would. Um, Stephen Curry in his career has had what, like one bad season when, when he's actually been playing significant minutes. And that was 2021. And I don't even think that's a bad season because they still finished six games above 500 in a very tough Western conference. He was second he had, in MVP voting that year. Barely. And I really, I still stand firm on, on, I, I'm on the argument that he should have won MVP. I'm still really pissed about that, but I, yeah, yeah. Six games above 500. Um, you know, they, they were the eighth best team in the Western Conference before the play-in tournament started. If they were in the East, they would have been easily in the playoffs. I don't think they would even have to have played in the play-in if they were in the East that year. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's true. And they had, I mean, look, the starting lineup had Kent Bazemore, who still can't find a home just two years later. Uh, Brad Wanamaker was playing very significant minutes. I, I could go on and on about that roster. Andrew Wiggins was not the Andrew Wiggins of now. Um, so he basically just had Draymond Wiggins and a whole bunch of Juan Toscano Andersons on his team, basically, and and I, and and they still finished six games above 500. Uh, I you put Kevin Durant on that Warriors team in 2021, they're not doing as good. I, I firmly believe that. I think if you put LeBron James on that 2021 team, maybe they're just as good. And you could go down the list, and the point is, it is ludicrous to say that Stephen Curry is not in the top five. I'm hogging this mic, man. Well, what are your thoughts? Please add on to that if you want to. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I have anything more to add to like the to 
you know, to kind of, you know, go into his argument. Um, if what about Mike James himself? Argument, I do want to talk about Mike James. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Okay. People might look at his NBA resume and say that, oh, this guy, what the hell is he talking about? He's played, what, 36 games in the NBA over two years, I, th- I think it is. I just looked this up. Uh, 49 games in the NBA over two years. Oh, this guy's not an NBA player. Trust me, if Mike James wanted to play in the NBA right now, he'd play in the NBA. He is really, really, really good. He is like a EuroLeague assassin. This guy, okay. like, he turned down NBA. He's turned down NBA money at least once, and I think multiple times because he can make more money overseas. Like, he essentially got out of a two way contract a couple of years ago with either Phoenix or New Orleans because, like, like his two his forty five days ended with Phoenix, and instead of like, and he averaged like ten points per game. Uh, it wasn't a good Phoenix team, but like he 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 was putting up like legit rotation. He's averaging ten point four points in twenty one minutes a game, but to go along with like almost four assists and three rebounds, really solid numbers. And like they I they didn't offer him a full roster spot, and so instead of going to the G League, he just went back. I believe that year he went overseas again. Uh, let me uh, double check this argument. Yeah, I mean, because he ended up, he ended up playing in Greece, and I think he came back to New Orleans. But like this guy, like this guy this year in Euroleague averaged 16 points per game. No one averages 16 points per game in Euroleague. Like you have to be a god to do that kind of stuff. Why? And it, and he's not doing it like he. I mean, he's doing it for like one of the top leagues in France. Or uh, for I mean, not one of the top league, one of the top teams in France. Which I mean. It's, it's not like he's also playing for, like, an ACB team either, like, in Spain. So, like, I, I don't know how good AS Monaco did in EuroLeague this year, the team he played for. But, like, for him to be putting up the numbers he did, he also averaged five and a half assists. Like, these games are, like, first to 80 wins, basically, and he's scoring more than 16 a game in them. Like, this guy is a G. Like, he is so good. He is so, so good. And so, like, people might, like, discredit his argument. Like, oh, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Like, you and I disagree with him. And I think a lot of people disagree with his argument. And I, like, I, I, I like vehemently disagree with his argument. But this guy, it's not like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, this guy knows what he's talking – this guy is – I mean, he's a pretty bo- – I can see why he said that about uh, Steph, like, about, like, uh, how he kind of played down his, uh, you know, playing off the ball. Because, like, Mike James is one of the most ball-dominant dudes out there. He's damn good at it. Also, great – if you want to see a great, like, post-game press conference, a coach ripping his guys, look at Pat Knight. This is Bobby Knight's son. But he's the okay. head coach of Lamar. He basically like intimate. He's like throwing all of his players under the bus, and he's saying like he basically like intimates his guys are like smoking dope and like just being bad dudes. And like he he starts this tirade right after Mike James like gets off the mic. It's, oh. and, and he's like kind of calling Mike James out in it too, if I believe. I'm not saying oh. that he's. I'm not saying that Pat Knight said, "Oh, Mike James is smoking dope and being a bad teammate." But I think he was, like, trying to light a fire under, like, Mike James, like, after that, like, led Lamar on this tear and they made the NCAA tournament. Like, I think they went undefeated through the regular season after. But it's an incredible – he's like, oh, you know, it's not just – the it's drugs. It's like – he's uh, – like, he eviscerates, like, a bunch of 18- to 22-year-old kids. And just like I mean, Just like Yeah. It was, <laughs> like, do yourself a favor and watch that press conference. It, it – it's like it's man, it, it's something else to see. So that that's what I have to say about Mike James. He is like one of the best players in Europe. And like if you ask people, like, hey, who's a guy in Europe who could play in the NBA right now? I've heard the name Mike James come up because the guy is like he. I mean, he's got to be making at least two to three million dollars a year overseas. Interesting. And we yeah. now know he's a he's a one of these reefer smoking dope fiends. 
no respect for that. Shame on you, Mike James. How dare you touch that stuff? It's so bad for you. It makes you such a horrible person in our clean society that we strive for. How dare anyone smoke marijuana? It's the devil's drug. It's so horrible. Cyrus is joking, folks. I'm, I'm joking again. Clearly, it's my joke. Sources. Cyrus is joking. <laughs> no, I obviously, I obviously am joking. My honest philosophy on anything in life is it's moderation is key. Um, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, that yeah. So so yeah. So that's Mike James. And again, this is Stephen Curry, a player who, in my opinion, has the second best handles in the entire league. I'll, that's one thing I'll give Kyrie Irving respect for. The man has some incredible handles, but Stephen Curry is right behind him. Greatest shooter the game's ever seen. He's put on enough muscle where he can create his own shot now with ease. I do agree with Draymond Green's sentiments. He said that about a month or so ago, uh, talking about um, just how Stephen Curry has changed as a player. Uh, and, and that added strength has helped him defensively. You're right. The rebounding numbers are always so solid. The dude, on average, grabs six boards a game for, for a player his size. That's I don't think you can just scoff at that. That's really impressive. Um, he he does handle the ball routinely, contrary to what Mike James said. Um, he can also play off the ball. Uh, he can certainly create his own shot. Um, you know, he's as good of a penetrator as anyone. Uh, I, it's just it's, it's absolutely ludicrous. I feel like the only thing that all, that consistently goes against Stephen Curry is his size. That and and you know, if Stephen Curry had just three more inches on him. He and Michael Jordan would be the two best players this game's ever seen. I so confidently believe in that. Um, but he's you know six two, six three with shoes on, and so he has to deal with those limitations. And people just judge him for that. It's crazy. I, I, don't, I don't. Let me ask you this: Do you think with all going with all of the stuff going on, is and I know we've been talking for a long time. I'm sorry, man. We'll, we'll go in just a second here. Uh, is Kevin Durant to you an overrated player at this point? The reason why I say no. that. No, just hands down. No, no. Okay, all right. There you go. Guys, monster. Discussion. He is a monster. <laughs> That's why. Do you think you. he's overrated? I, I, a little bit, just because I, the way I, I see people talk about how he's like, you know, give between what the Nets are asking for in trades, between people like Stephen A. Smith and a lot of people like pundits across the country call him still the best player in the NBA. I do not. Think he deserves that title. Giannis deserves it much more than him. And the fact that you know he he had the opportunity to to have his own team. He's a leader of this team, and you know they got swept. He had Kyrie with him right there. I know that team is thin and is sorely lacking defensively, but they got swept. They got their asses kicked in the first round of the playoffs last year. If he's that good, you know, and he had Kyrie Irving next to him, who's either Kyrie's also really overrated. He also had Seth Curry. He had some talent on that team. So I don't know, man. Maybe uh, a little bit. A little to, bit. To, what do you to think? play devil's advocate here. Please do. Because uh, it's Makes what I content. like to do, Cyrus. I yes. like to be yeah. the devil on your shoulder. Uh, it was like one of the closest sweeps in NBA history. Like I think they Fair. lost four games by a combined like 11 points or Fair. so. I don't know. But yes. like in the first game, they lost on a buzzer beater. They win that game, maybe something else. Uh, Turn, it turns that series. I, I do remember Malika Andrews actually saying on NBA Today after Game One, she was afraid that that series could turn into a sweep, and people were saying it's like going to be like this monster series. She turned out to be right. Uh, yeah, but um, so yeah, kudos to Malika for that. Um, Oakland Zone, baby. Yeah, indeed. Um, I, there's one other thing we got to touch on. Yeah. Real quick. Are you done? I'm sorry. Unless I don't want to cut you no, off. No, I'm but... trying. I, I, I swear I had something else to say about Kevin well, Durant. We're just talking but... about Durant. And, and, and just to add to that, if you remember what you're going to say, add it. But I just want to add – I want to add this real quick. It is fascinating to me that the the trajectory of our this great game's history um, could have splintered into so many different directions. Jay saw just single plays where inches were the difference. Like – Take Robert Ori's multiple game winners, right? He misses any of those shots. History has changed forever. And I think of that because of Kevin Durant's toe being like this yeah. much. If you're watching on YouTube, it's like this much on the line. And if his toe was not on that line when he made that shot against the Bucks two years ago, the Nets, I don't know if they win the championship, but they sure as hell had a much better, you know, they were they would have been the favorites. They would have probably beaten the Suns in the finals. And the discussion is night and day different. So yeah. It's just crazy. I don't know. I just going off on a tangent here, just thinking about how the most minuscule yeah. plays make such huge differences. And Kevin Durant, you're right, could be 
we could be talking about him being a three-time champion. He let the all just because, but just because of a couple of inches, man. Maybe even an inch, like four inches. Yeah, crazy. No, nah, yeah, that, that that was crazy. Do sure. you remember what you were gonna say, or? Uh... No, I I just think like that. I, I was just gonna say that that team was like severely limited the Nets this year. Like Joe Harris wasn't playing. Ben Simmons obviously didn't play. Yeah, the whole you know the James Harden Ben Simmons trade. Uh, and yeah, Kyrie was there, but he played like 20 something regular season games because of his choice to to not get vaccinated. And, and so like it was just it like they were like just a, a drama road show all season long. Like they had zero continuity and they were playing against like a team that was like the hottest in the league for the last three months of the time they True. played him. So like I mean, they, they lost game one on buzzer beater. Game two, they blew a 17-point lead. And then they were just kind of like scrappy underdogs in game three and four. And, like, Blake Griffin, like, played his heart out in those games, I remember. Right. But, like, um, still a free agent, by the way. Interesting. Yeah, right still, still free agent. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, the year you 14. Like out there. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. Like so, uh, so, yeah, that's uh, – yeah, I think that was my only other pushback. Like on, uh, like I don't think like it's Kevin Durant's fault that they got swept by the Celtics. I I feel you. I just yeah. I don't, I do put a lot of weight on if you are the alpha of the team and you're 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 the leader. You're the guy that ultimately all the either the credit or the blame falls on your shoulders. Because um, Steph's in, endured that a lot in his career, you know. And I do feel like Durant should also shoulder some of that. I mean. Durant's blown a three-one lead as well, you know, in, in in the Western Conference Finals. He's, I don't know, but whatever. Uh, I don't mean to hate on Durant. I just, but I do. It's just the more I hear about him, and lately it's just been just this. I feel like it's just this unadulterated praise uh, directed toward him. Like, and I'm just kind of like, let's take a step back here a little bit. He is a phenomenal player. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt. But, um, you know, it. I don't know. I guess I have a hard time giving players a lot of love when if you take away a few inches from their height, like if that would severely impact their game. And I, and I feel like with a guy like Kevin Durant, if he's six, eight, instead of six eleven, I don't know if he's as good of a play. If he's still a hall of fame type player might be uh, LeBron James, if he's six, five, instead of six, eight, probably a hall of famer, but nowhere near the discussion of like a top 10 all time type stature, you know? Um, but if Michael Jordan is six, three, I think he's still like kicking, you know what? I don't know. He might not be the greatest ever, but still might be like top five. Uh, he would be like Stephen Curry. I think in a lot of ways, I don't know. So I guess that's when I come to judge, when it comes to judging players and analyzing players, I like this to, I respect skill sets. You know what I'm saying? Like, like players who actually have to work their ass off to, to get, a, get a bucket and guys like Durant, he's, I mean, he's seven feet tall and, and it's, I'm impressed by the, by the ball handling and all that, but um, you know, I just whatever, man. I'm, I'm just yeah, Kevin Durant has a monster skill set, Cyrus. Let's, he does. He does. Let's All I'm saying work. is, is it really that good? Like, is his ball, is his ball handling really that amazing, or is it because he's six eleven that we're just like, whoa, is some footer can bring the ball up the court? You know, um, well, how, how many how many how many people his size in 2006 when he was at Texas was doing the kind of stuff he was doing? None. So none. Exactly. You but go. you just kind of played into my, my whole point, which is his size is what why people give him so much love. I just um, for his size. You're right. He's phenomenal. I have it on this show, by the way. Uh, we ha I, I feel awful for this. I haven't touched on this once. Um, Bill Russell passed away yeah. uh, and his impact. And, and it's really crazy when you when you talk about his impact, because as a player, he was he was phenomenal. I mean, the dude was winning MVP awards and championships going up against the likes of Will Chamberlain, uh, you know, 11 titles in 13 years. I believe he was the first African-American um, head coach in the history of all of uh, major professional sports. Um, clearly his civil rights act uh, uh, acts, his courage playing as a, as a black athlete in those er in that era um, in a region like Boston, especially where it's no secret. There's a ton of racism there. Um, all of that. It's just, I've never heard a single bad thing about him. You could feel, you could just sense his heart uh, from a TV screen. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, it's 88. It's not, you know, it's, it's old. It's not a tragic uh, point in someone's life to, to pass away, but still, man, he was a presence and he was a tremendous human being and his impact is immeasurable. 
Um, so I just want to give some respect and some love to Bill Russell. Any thoughts on Bill Russell before yeah. we wrap things up here? I mean, USF Don's legend. Two NCAA right. titles with the Don's. That's right. So the Clivens right. high own. Um, so, yeah, Bay Area guy through and through. Um, yeah, I mean, he's just one of those guys. Obviously, I never had a chance to watch play live. Just seen black and white footage of highlights and stuff. But, uh, I mean, he's larger than life. I mean, the, the NBA Finals trophy is named after – NBA Finals MVP trophy is named after him. And, like, obviously you knew one day he was going to have to pass on. But, like, I just never really fathomed that day because it's just like, you know, it just felt like Bill Russell persisted. Um, and, yeah, I mean, uh, a, a very sad day. Uh, he's – one of one. I mean, 11 yeah. titles in 13 years. And I mean, I I hesitate to bring this up because I saw it on Twitter. So <laughs> this may or may not be true. It, I think it came from a check mark. So maybe it has a 5% better chance of it being true. Did it start with sources? No, sources it didn't said? start with sources, Cyrus. Okay. <laughs> this one person on Twitter put out, that Bill Russell played in 21 do or die games in his career, like playoff game sevens, Olympic medal round games, NCAA tournament games, and he went 21 and 0. Um, he's, got, he's got the clutch. Someone has to check that, but like, I mean, that sounds like a crazy stat, but like, I am willing to at least believe it without it's having to check it. It is. Because it, is, it is Bill Russell, and he is like the greatest winner in the history of sports. Incredible. You're right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, Jesus, I almost swore there. It's, it's just so damn impressive what he's done. 11 titles in 13 years. So, also, um, I would like to say we talk about his, you know, his activism, which was obviously, you know, much needed for this country. I do also want to give him uh, and Kareem Abdul Jabbar a, a lot of, you know, credit not only for what they did back in the 60s and 70s, but for, like, trying to get people vaccinated in 2021. Yes. Bravo. Like, Bill Russell was, yes. like, one of the first guys. Yeah, he, I think it was him and Kareem who, like, rolled their sleeve up and, like, tried to, like, get that message out. They were, like, two of the people that the NBA, like, uh, you know, put front and center to, like, yep. get vaccinated. And so yep. props to Bill for that. Oh, and, and Kareem, you're right, man. Kareem was scolding LeBron for a while yeah. uh, over the issue, man. I was loving every second of that. So, yeah, you're absolutely right, man. Great call. Um, and thanks for sticking with me. We did almost a whole hour here. My apologies to Locked On. We're supposed to do 30 minutes on average. We're breaking damn near an hour. But I'll say this as we wrap things up. Uh, this is the second to last show until mid-August. Uh, I'm taking next week off doing who knows what. Uh but I, I might travel to Seattle. I might go see my buddy, John Zimmerman, who's from Marin. We went to college together. He lives in Missoula, Montana. I might make a road trip out there. Um, whatever. There's, this is the time of year where I'm going to bail, right? I mean, what else? Can, you know, <laughs> there's like nothing going on right now in the NBA. Um, and you've done some great traveling, man. Like you you just got back from Phoenix for spring training with your dad. That was fun, right? I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went to some baseball games. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, next week, I'm going to Sacramento and Reno, Thunder Valley, playing some poker tournaments. Reno, mm. hit the craps table, some blackjack, hopefully a poker tournament there, too. I uh, got some friends Bravo. that live up there. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to kicking uh, kicking back uh, next week. And, uh, yeah, man, just uh, taking it easy. Uh, yeah, might, might be doing some, some basketball stuff this weekend. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, after that, nothing really till the end of August for me. So, yeah. All right, man. We got to grab a beer soon. I think I think yeah. this is the time. When I get back, we'll reach out. We'll we'll meet up. Um, dude, I feel, have you ever been in a fight in your life? I ask that because you're like the one of the nicest people I've ever met. I can't imagine anyone ever being mad at you. But I so which it does make me curious, man. Has as has anyone ever made you so upset that you've decided to get into a physical altercation with them? I mean, like in elementary school, yeah, there were some one-hitter quitters. Um, <laughs> I remember picking a kid up and throwing him down. That was, nice. That was, yeah, that was fourth grade. That was not a good uh, – I immediately regretted it. I, my temper can run pretty high. Uh, 
But um, yeah, I mean, yeah. let's see. Like the most, I used to get kind of pissed off on, on you know playing pickup if people were just acting stupid. Yeah. Right? Sometimes I would like raise to their level of idiocy and, and like just start shouting back at them. But like it would never get physical. Uh, there you go. I mean, I've seen plenty of fights on, on the court, but they never involved me physically. Just some shouting matches here and there that I got involved in. But no, I mean, definitely not as an adult because like as an adult, you can get tried and that doesn't sound like a good idea. Uh, high school, I think I punched one of my friends once. Oh, uh, okay. Same. It was just kind of pissing me off. But I mean, it was, yeah. Uh, outside of that, <laughs> no. I, I mean, I haven't really gotten to like a knock them down, drag them out fight. I'm, I'm an only child, so I didn't have siblings to fight with. Girl, oh, they- <laughs> so, you're yeah. civilized. Look at you, though. I like that. I didn't know you had a temper, man. I, I could see it. I, oh, I respect yeah. it. It's yeah, kind of like during, uh, during like a, a couple of months ago, I was playing poker. And I was just pissed at how I ended this one game and lost my money. And, like, I just slammed my front door, like, hella hard. And, like, I had multiple neighbors, like, hey, you all right? What's going on? And I was just, like, total dumbass. Like, my bad. I was just, I was just being stupid. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I just, like, tried to slam the door off the hinges. I, was, I, was, I mean, it wasn't even, like. It was stupid, but uh, yeah, I, I get a little hot under the collar when I uh, when I lose my money in poker. Like I get kicked out you. when I get eliminated in the tournament. But yeah, anyways, that, that's great basketball podcast material, right? There. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Dude. Thanks for sharing. I think you want to know a little bit about some of our personal uh, yeah. tidbits here and there. So that's good stuff, man. By the way, this Rick Gary uh, t-shirt jersey I'm wearing, you can own this. Just click on I the have link. That. Yes, yeah. I'm glad, I hope it's comfortable. I hope you like yeah, it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I just got in the mail, and I've, I've been out of town, so I haven't put it on yet. But it did come, so thank you. Good, good, good. Love it, man. Yeah. Next time you're on, if you don't mind wearing it, I'll, I'll hype it up. And and if anyone's interested, Hall of Famer Rick Barry and I have a few clothing items as, as part of our our new apparel company that we were launched. Uh, and just go to the link on, on the top of my Twitter account at Dog Surf Road Show. Kevin Dana, the voice of the Santa Cruz Warriors, uh, his Twitter account is at Kevo408. You can follow him there, and you can follow this program on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. Again, tomorrow, Kylan Mills joins me, and then that'll be it for about a week and a half or so. Uh, it's summer doldrums, so get out there and actually play basketball for once instead of just watching it. All those damn hot and a little smoky, but what are you going to do? I love you, brother. Thanks as always for coming on. Um, yeah, we'll do this again soon, probably in about two weeks or so. Sounds good, Thank Cyrus. You. Thank Take you. Take care, man. Thank <sniffs> you.